Hello everyone, this is Suzanne and God Crochet and Chatter. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you decided to join me again today for another message from God's Word. This is fantastic. We've been going through the Bible in a year and it's been such a great journey. I know I always say that, but it's just so true. All right, today we're going to get to our trivia question, our devotion, and then I have a couple of things to talk to you about. All right, let's get to this, okay? And oh, thank you for all your comments. You guys are all so sweet. I do my best as a teacher, and I love your encouragement. You give back to me and how we uplift and encourage each other. That is so fantastic, and I thank you so much for that. If you are watching and you don't have time to leave a comment, please remember to press that like button for me, please. All right, everyone, let's get to it. Okay, yesterday's question, which was the oldest original complete manuscript of a Bible book found among the Dead Sea Scrolls, and that was Isaiah. Today's question, what do the ten horns of the beast represented in Revelation 17? What do the ten horns of the beast represent in Revelation 17? Okay, let's get to our lesson. Today we did chapters 19 through 21 in the book of John. We have now completed the book of John. We have gone through 30 books. 30 books. All right, tomorrow, actually, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm going through 30 books. We've gone through 30 weeks of study. That's much better. All right. Week 31 starts on Monday. And we will be in Ecclesiastes for the first three days. And then Psalms for the rest of the week. On Monday, please read Ecclesiastes 1 through 4. Oh, I've been waiting for the study in Ecclesiastes. All right. This information will be in the drop-down box below. I'll probably do that tomorrow, and then you'll be able to follow along. So for now, remember Ecclesiastes chapters 1 through 4. I want to encourage you all to be an organ donor. Give your heart to God. Uh, shouldn't we all be giving our heart to God? Absolutely. In John 21, 25, it says, And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which, if they were written one by one, that even the world itself could not contain the books that could be written. Well, as you heard, that is my timer. I made an apple pie. I've already shut the oven off. It smells so good in here. So I'm sorry about that. I forgot to turn the timer off. All right, 20, verse 30. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. What is revealed for us is sufficient. You know, this reminds me of, my mom had tons and tons and tons of recipes that she had written out in different books. And, wow, just from the little she did, it was sufficient to last me a lifetime. But yet, over the years, I still collected cookbooks and uh, through friends and neighbors, got recipes from them. So, yeah, sometimes there's a lot of stuff in those books, aren't they? But the things that are written in the Bible are sufficient for us. William Hendrickson said, Many, very many facts pertaining to the sojourn of Christ on earth has been recorded in the Bible. All of them serve to strengthen the faith of the church in the deity and all sufficiency of Jesus. But now that the book is finished, no one must think that the story is complete in the sense that everything Jesus did has been recorded. 
How could it be possible for anyone to deposit in writing the full significant of all what Jesus did? Enumerating the facts one by one and bringing out the sign significance of each word and deed in his love and all other divine virtues was so gloriously displayed. There is so much teachings on what Jesus did, the people he talked to, the people he healed, the miracles he did. Wow, those are sufficient for anyone to come to believe in Jesus and to be saved and have everlasting life. It is literally true that Were one to attempt this, he would discover that the world itself could not contain the written volumes. And for this simple reason, that no infinite number can ever record the deeds done by infinite love. Oh, did you catch that? Infinite love, the deeds done by infinite love. Wow. When there's this never-ending supply of love that Jesus had for us, had for his disciples, for the sick, for the poor, for the hungry. It was never ending, never, never ending. If the heavens were parchment and all the sons of men writes and all the trees of the forest pins, they would not be sufficient for writing all the wisdom which he possessed. And that was by Eliezer, a prominent rabbi. If the heavens were parchment, and all the sons of men writers, and all the trees of the forest pens, they would not be sufficient for writing all the wisdom which he possessed. Whoever finds the meaning of the words of Jesus will not taste death. Of course, that if they apply those teachings to their life, they will not taste death. Because Jesus rose from the grave we too will be risen from the grave and we will walk with Jesus, be with Jesus throughout eternity. And what a wonderful time that will be. The things that are written clearly and convincingly get the point across that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that we must believe upon him to be saved from our sins and have eternal life. The devil writes contradicting books not from reliable sources. The Apocrypha books conflict with the things taught in the Bible. That's why the Apocrypha was not included in the writings, because there was a conflict. What does Satan do? He wants conflict among God's people. He wants to dress things up. He wants to be an angel of light or have the appearance of that when he is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The Bible is the only book that you can trust with absolute confidence that it is true. You know, with all the archaeological digs out there and the things that they've uncovered, there's no doubt Jesus lived during this time. There's a great historian called Josephus. He wrote about Jesus. So, yeah, we're without excuse. You know, you believe in history... You believe that George Washington was Abraham Lincoln. We believe that the Holocaust happened. There are many things we believe in historically to be accurate and true. Why is it people say when it comes to the Bible, oh, well, you know, that was written by men and it's so outdated. And No, it's not outdated. It was not just written by men. It was written by inspired men of God. Psalms 119, 160 says, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Study the Bible to be wise, practice it to be safe, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. Study the Bible to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this study on the written word. And we can take great delight. We can know without a shadow of a doubt that the Bible is accurate and true. No matter what anybody says, 
They've tried to burn the Bible. They try to do away with God's word, but it remains forever and ever and ever as God said it would. All right, everyone, and that's it for the devotion today. I want to show you something. Let me see where I put it. Hang on one second. Uh, get up over here, see if I can find it real quick. Here it is. As you know, my daughter is a Pampered Chef consultant, and I've been using the Pampered Chef air fryer. Oh my goodness, what a blessing. And there are also a lot of neat gadgets, very useful gadgets. I got the Rapid Prep Mandolin, and uh, let me get that and show that to you, it's really cool. I don't know how many of you are kitchen gadget women. I'm a kitchen gadget woman from long ago, and I love my kitchen gadgets. Just ask my husband. He keeps saying, well, what do you need that for? What does that do? But he always encourages me and I can appreciate that. So this is the Rapid Slice Medallion. And back here, you have your different thicknesses, um, cuts rather, and then here, the thicknesses. And this, I've only used this a couple times. Okay, of course I can't figure out how to, there we go. All right, this tray fits it like this. Okay, and then you have this handle here, and you just go like that. And then right here, you push this down, and then this fits in here. Okay, I'm not gonna put it on right now, but that, that fits there. And then when you're ready to slice, you push this handle up and down, and of course everything falls into this ball. I have done potatoes in here. Very nice job. I haven't tried carrot yet or any of that stuff. I have to get some from the market. But I am finding this to be very, very useful, very handy. Um, there's still some things I like to chop by hand, like my apple slices. I don't know. I just, I don't know. There's something about cutting them up, right? But, um, yeah, this is really, really cool. And, and my daughter, she, she, she gave this to her mommy because she loves her mommy. And she gave me the air fryer because she loves her mommy. And she's getting me the um, Instapot by Pamper Chef. So, yes, I am one pampered mommy. I had never heard about Pamper Chef. And um, my daughter's, oh, mom, you got to see this. This is so cool. Well, this here I use today. I made an apple pie, a Swedish apple pie. It is so good. You just take your apples and cinnamon and throw them in your pie plate, and then you make this mixture out of eggs, flour, um, butter, eggs, flour, butter, and salt. And you mix all this together, and you put that over the top of the pie. And as it's baking, the crust goes down and covers the pie, which is really cool. Now, this here is the apple core. Now, I've tried those ones where you put it over the apple and you push down. Oh, my goodness. I can't get those to work. It's very hard to push it down. You really have to be strong to do that. And sometimes when we get older, we don't have that strength that we need to do that. And our hands hurt. Well, this one here, oh, my goodness. I put, in fact, let me show you real quick. And it's just too cool not to show you. I'll peel this for my husband to eat later. All right, so here's the apple, right? All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down here. I can't see it. Yeah, I know, but this is the best I've got. Let me tip All right, now what I'm going to do. Let me tip it. Okay, Ron's going to come over here and tip it. Tip it, dear. There we go, perfect. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the center as even as possible, and then you just twist like this all the way down. There we go. And then you just pull back. And now look at here. See that core? Here's the core. And then we just are going to pop that out. And there we go. And there's your apple off cord. Now, you, when I cut this in half, I may have to do a little bit because some of these apples are really big. But, oh, my goodness, I did like six apples today. 
and I had them done in no time for my pie and it was just so nice. My hands didn't hurt. So yeah, well anyway, I thought I'd play around in the kitchen a little bit with you today. Kind of let you know a little bit more of what I do. I just saw our friend John. John is the man that is going to get us a deer this year. We just have to pay the processing fee. And I said, hey, John, I got some hot apple pie cooking in the oven. Come by at 6 and grab some. He said, oh, all right. And um, so, yeah, he's going to bring us some more meat. So that was kind of nice. All right, everyone, this is Suzanne on God Crochet and Cheddar. I hope you have a most blessed day. I will be back on Monday with another lesson from God's Word, and that was Ecclesiastics chapter 1 through 4. Now, real quick, something else I started doing. You may decide to do this or not. It's, it's up to you. But I thought if you'd want to want to do it for yourself too, it'd be nice kind of having a writing buddy. Let me know in the comments below if it's something that, hey, yeah, I think I might want to do that. Well, I was listening to Dr. David Jeremiah, and he suggested to write out scriptures by hand because it just retain you retain it better in your in your mind. And he's done this for years. And he highly suggested, he believes the best book in the Bible is the book of Romans. So he asked if you want to, to write out the book of Romans. You don't have to write out 50 verses a day. You go at your own pace. Today, I wrote out the first six verses. I'm going to do between three and five verses a day. The idea is not to do too many where you get tired of it and quit. But do just enough that you're writing, even if it's one verse a day. Grab yourself a notebook and write on it Romans written by and your name. and um, Or copied by, not written by, copied by. So yeah, so if you want to join me in that, I thought that would be a great exercise for us to do. All right, everyone, I'm going to let you go. We need to get out for our walk today. You have a most blessed day tomorrow. I hope you can get some rest. And I will be back, Lord willing, on Monday. Bye, everyone.